Daily life is a spiritual sport, a struggle to best ourselves and to realize our highest purpose. But what if we're playing that sport with not one soul, but two? And what if our second soul is a rival, custom made for each of us, constantly challenging us, in a way training us, like an athlete, to fight for our goals? That's what the ancient Kabbalah masters taught, and they provided a clear system that anyone can learn and implement. That's what I'm writing about, and want to tell you about briefly in this tale of two souls. I was looking for a lot of answers, and uh, every one that I went to, uh, I wasn't getting any answers, basically. I had started with Googling Kabbalah in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and immediately one of Rabbi Dan Lewin's videos popped up. I watched the whole thing, and then I watched another one. Anything good in life takes work. You're not going to find that bliss and that relationship with God by just surrendering. They might use the word like pop psychology or something, but that wasn't the approach here. Pop psychology, pop Kabbalah, uh, spirituality, visualize what you want, surrender and empty your mind and everything is one and beautiful. A lot of those books and the promise of enlightenment, what that's really missing is the inner fight. And not only the fight, but the system of how to get there. This idea of spiritual search and this idea of competition, at first glance, they've got nothing to do with each other. But when you start to dig deeper into the sources and the book that I'm putting together, they have everything to do with each other. I just wanted to know how to maneuver in there the same way that you're in a playing field. You know, there's, there's a sense of survival. This is like an instruction manual. It's even like a road map, even because you're moving from experience to experience, moment to moment. It's not so much that a body has a soul, but a soul has a body. If it's true that someone has an opponent and has obstacles, it doesn't give you a map to overcome those obstacles. There's a driving evil force inside everybody, and that's kind of like your opponent, your custom-built opponent. The greatest rival and opponent being yourself, you know, that just completely rings true with everything that I've experienced in my life. I've dealt with like a lot of adversity in, in my life, you know. I've had to, you know, stand up and step up to the plate and dealing with other people. But uh, my problem was with myself. And so I didn't understand like the struggle that I was actually having and how to deal with it. I didn't have any structure or any principles. One technique is prayer. So. Praying, putting on to fill in is very important for me. You know, you should never try to be better than anybody else, but be the best that you can be, but you almost need that opponent to bring that out in you. The further you go, the more subtle the opponent will be, and the harder it will be to notice when you're sort of succumbing to your weaker side. The same emotion in one context that can be extremely healing and helpful and change your life, if you take that out of context, could be extremely damaging. The trap of the opponent is to feel bad at the wrong time. I wasn't able to internalize and say, well, it could come from a good place or it could come from a bad place. You say, I want to beat somebody. Is that coming from a good place inside you? You show me a good loser and I'll show you a loser. That resonated a lot with me because I hate to lose, you know. Kabbalah teaches that everybody has that drive to be competitive. And it's just a question of how that's applied. And if you can find a way to awaken that part, that competition applied in the right context, that's the difference between you accomplishing your dreams and potential or failing with some addiction or some flaw that you have or some selfishness and so forth. I think that it's going to help a lot of people out in general. It's really global. It doesn't address just the spiritual and the hereafter. It's not just dealing with someone who's religious. It is motivational, but not just motivational. They can peel back the layers and they can use it within their business life, their relationship with their loved ones, the family, you know, spouse friendship. I mean, there's just so many different ways that this book applies to you that I don't see it having the limitations that other books have. It's going to be life-changing and it's going to be a book that I keep around, you know, and I, I can hold on to, you know, and continue to reference throughout my life. This is something that I've been working on for more than 10 years. 
I've been teaching this at university. I've been teaching this in adult education classes around the community. I've seen the effects. There's no doubt in my mind that this is going to change people's lives and reach a broad audience. The only question now is how soon that's going to happen with the funding. And that's where I really need people's help to make this project happen.